Hello, my name is Jason and welcome to Best Binoc Reviews. In today's video, we're going to be opening up this box sent in to me by German Precision Optics or GPO. In it, I do believe contains one of their 50mm versions of their flagships from their flagship series, the Passion HD binoculars. Now, available in either an 8.5 times, 10 times, or 12 times. 0.5 times um, variant. I'm not entirely sure which model they've decided to send me. So we're going to find out together and we're going to find out right now. Right, so welcome back. I've made my way around to this end of the table and I think I've got all the uh, recording devices working and up and running again now. Um, okay, so as I said, I, I do believe it's one of the 50mm versions of their um, flagship series, um, the Passion HD. Now, I do have a pretty good um, understanding of, of what to expect. Uh, wow, I certainly have done a good job <laughs> in boxing this up. Of the best packaging that I've ever come across, to be honest with you. Right, there we go, finally. Okay, so finally get inside the first layer of the box. Um, so there we go. Let's have a take a look at first. Well, so as you can see, um, GPO do have done a really excellent job in terms of the, the packaging, making sure that the binocular arrives safe and sound. Let's get rid of all this else in the box. Just throw that away. Right, so there we go. Um, so as I said, um, I do have a pretty good idea of what to expect inside here because I have actually tested the 10 by 42 millimeter version of this binocular. Um, and as I said, it's uh, for me, it's definitely one of the best binoculars that I've ever tested um, within the sort of under $1,000, 1,000 euro, 1,000 pound sort of price range. Um, indeed, it won the award for for that particular um, sort of price range um, this year within the, within the BBR awards. So I do know, <laughs> as I say, I do know what I'm pretty much expecting. Uh, before we open up the box, let's just have a look because I really do like the packaging um, in terms of what GPO provide, um, and that's not just because it's sort of quietly, quite nicely matches. Um, BBR's sort of color scheme, but I, I do really think that it looks really nice and classy and um, having come from a design background where in a previous life I used to actually design packaging not, not for binoculars unfortunately, but I used to do it for food food products which weren't nearly as exciting, but I do appreciate as I always say um, good packaging and this is excellent packaging and it, it gives you a, it definitely gives you a good first impression. So there we go, we do know exactly which model we're going to be looking at now and the, the cat is out of the hat, we're going to be looking at the Passion HD 10x50, which is quite nice because as I said, I've already tested the 10x42mm version, which I do actually still have with me. So it's going to be great for me to be able to compare them side by side. Um, and in fact, uh, just thinking you know, off the top of my head right now, I'm going to actually make a video comparing the 10x42 versus the 10x50mm version. Um, just the differences and, and what I see, um, also in theory and also exactly what I see. Just that I think that'll be a make a nice uh, video for us to decide which, which binocular would be best for specific uses and, and the like. The thing with um, GPO is the binoculars are, as they put, designed in Germany, but they're actually, um, as far as I know, uh, made in Japan. Their idea is to deliver an extremely um, high quality instrument which um, in, from past experience they've achieved, but at the same time they're able to keep the prices a little bit lower than some of those Alpha brands by the fact that they use um, uh, slightly cheaper um, forms of production, um, so out in Asia. So Japan, uh, very well expected, respected within the optics sort of world. I mean, obviously that's where lots of the biggest camera brands come from, so their um, expertise is, is uh, top notch and therefore, um, GPO have been able to leverage this and thereby create a, a binocular of extremely high quality but at a, a cheap, a slightly cheaper price range. So these tend to be around around about the thousand dollar pound euro range. Um, yet they compete very well against binoculars way, way more expensive than these, you know, the Alpha level brands, in my opinion. Right, so without all that, let's open up the box and uh, put you guys out of your misery. 
Um, and so, as usual, as I said, I'm quite, um, I was sort of pretty sure of what to expect because this is exactly how the 10 by 42 millimeter version came. And I think it's a, it's a wonderful way to present the binocular, you know, in a box like this. Um, with the packaging, you know, first impressions again really do count. I mean, look at that. You, you're presented with a, a binocular next to the carry case. Um, bam, there you go. Um, and if you're anything like me who really um, likes binoculars, likes the design of them, um, you know, this is, you know, um, eye candy for me, definitely. Um, okay, so where should we begin? Let's just quickly go with the accessories. So the carry case from GPO. Um, on the Passion HD series is is fantastic in that it's a, of a semi-rigid design so I like that in, because it obviously provides a little bit more protection to the, the optics when you put them inside. Um, it has a zip closure now as you can hear on the microphone no doubt the slight downside to this is it obviously makes a fair amount of noise Unless you carefully open the zip. <laughs> so in some situations, you know, be that for, you know, perhaps some birders or, or hunters, for example, or wildlife observers, this may be an issue and it's something to keep in mind. So it's a slight negative side to having zipped closures. Obviously on the positive side, um, it's a very secure system and your binoculars aren't going to fall out. You know, the, the other options are something like a magnetic closure which tend to be much quieter, but obviously not as secure. And the other option being something like Velcro, which is the most noisiest and the hardest to keep quiet. So the zip itself, as you can see, uh, looks very good quality. You know, sometimes the teeth, if it's, if it's tight, I've had in the past with some brands, it, it, they break and then that ruins the bag completely. But this looks like they should be uh, long lasting enough. And there's gonna be a carry strap of sorts, which attaches onto there. I do like that. They don't have a belt belt loop, which I guess for a 50 millimeter binocular is sort of standard. You wouldn't really want to carry a 50 millimeter binocular on your belt. That would be quite difficult. Um, it does look like this. You would be able to attach it to a harness as well, of uh, some ways. You know, of some ways. So that could be an interesting option. I like the fact it's branded. It's not obviously not just some generic um, case that comes out of a big factory in China somewhere, like many do. Right, so you've got all the stuff inside you. They've, so it's quite a nice way of, of presenting this, as I said, because usually what happens when you get a binocular um, in a box, it comes inside the case, which is quite good for protecting it during transport. But then it's always the, the problem with the packaging is having you know, the straps and everything else, where to put it. And so uh, it's just something, anyway, this is a bit different. Um, as, so we'll quickly go, this is going to be the um, objective lens covers. Um, a bit different to most in the fact that they're not actually always tethered to the binocular because these days it's quite often you have um, with an elasticated loop. Um, these uh, instead um, you have like this way and you can then fix this either onto your neck strap. Um, it does come with a quick release clip which is quite good um, or you could just have it on the, on the eyelets on the side of the binocular. Um, personally, I'm not a huge fan of these. I, I quite like the ones that just um, are looped and you just hang underneath the binocular when I'm use. And um, this, you know, dangling down, it just feels a bit more like it would get in your way and 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 the such. But there you go. And um, we will try later during the review how it fits and etc. etc. Et rain guard, very typical. This is just a standard rain guard that will um, attach to your. I'm just hopefully the only looking now sort of 10 minutes into the video whether it's a focus properly I hope it is um, yeah so the rain guard uh, very standard it's not attached to the, the eyepieces I like the fact it's um, got a flexible bridge here just so it'll be able to whatever your IPD setting um, it'll be able to remain attached so moving swiftly along this is going to be the strap for the carry case I like the fact obviously they've got twisters here so they won't get twisted up and the fact that the uh, strap itself is slightly padded, not well, I wouldn't say it's well padded, but it has a slidable um, shoulder pad here. So it will be a little more comfortable than unpadded straps um, if you're gonna be carrying this around sort of a long period of time, which for a sort of larger 10 by, you know, 50 millimeter binocular is, is certainly a consideration or, you know, an aspect to keep in mind. Now the next straps I know from experience from GPO are excellent. I mean, look at that. Um, it's uh, 
as padded as you would ever liked it or, or want a strap to be. Look, um, look how thick the padding is there, really thick, thick, thick padding. So it's super comfortable, definitely. They, um, from my experience, they, they really are comfortable neck straps. The only slight um, thing I would say is it would be nicer if they were slightly more curved in their design. I mean, it's a very slight curve to it, but more curved and it would fit sort of nicer around your shoulders and neck, as it were. A good aspect to these is this uh, neoprene material underneath. It's uh, very grippy. So that stops the binocular from sliding. Um, that's something that really annoys me, especially with heavier binoculars, when they slide from left to right when you're carrying them around your neck. Um, so this helps, definitely helps prevent that, which is something that I really like to see. Very well made neck strap, you can see. Um, very well padded. The only thing always is, I would say it's pretty that they don't have a quick release clip, just so that you could take it off and on from the binocular very quickly. You know, uh, I like to be able to swip them out and um, attach it to my um, harness or, or just carry the binoculars by hand and not have a strap, you know, and having to do the slider, you know, to, to take that out. It just takes a bit of time. So, so that's the only negative I have sort of comments on the, the neck straps themselves. And then we have um, a instruction booklet. It's chunky, definitely, a lot of pages, but as you can see, it's in a whole bunch of languages. So it's usually just um, tells you the basic information. And as you can say, it, it covers the entire range of the Passion HD series. So you've got the two 42 millimeter versions, the eight and 10 by 42, and then the 8.5, this model, the 10 by 50, and then a more powerful 12 by 50 version. It's gonna be a lens cleaning kit, or, or cloth, um, a microfiber cleaning cloth, Again, very nice packaging. Um, doesn't get much better than that, does it? Um, uh, let's just have a quick look at the quality of the cloth. Um, yeah, very nice. Look, I mean, it's that's super microfiber. So these um, types of cloths are are obviously um, very high quality and perfectly fine for cleaning your lenses um, if you're very careful. I, I tend to use something like this. Um, just keep it in the case and use it when out in the field in case for whatever reason your lens gets a little bit of a mark on it. But you, you do need to be quite um, blow first and then just rub it very, very lightly. I mean, ideally you still want to get yourself, especially with a high pair of binoculars like this, a proper lens cleaning kit. Um, just so that you can properly clean the lenses without fear of um, any sort of uh, solid material on the actual lens surface itself marking the actual coatings themselves. I'll leave a link down below to um, some, and, and you know, lens cleaning kit doesn't have to cost a lot of money. And so I would highly recommend if you're going to spend a bit of money on your pair of binoculars, make sure that you spend a little bit more, not much. I mean, it's usually if you can spend under $10 and get some uh, a cleaning kit with a blower in that just to make sure that you don't damage the coatings. Right, so that's the accessories. Um, as I knew and was expecting, high quality, excellent stuff. Okay, so let's move on to the, the main course. And then as you said, this sort of display case, uh, I just wanna go. Um, a nice place, uh, would you keep your binoculars like this? <coughs> Perhaps not, and <coughs> unless you're gonna keep them um, stored for over a long period of time, but in terms of transport, um, I was just saying that it's, you know one of the downsides to transporting it without it being in its case is the potential of damage. But as you can see, this is a foam insert here, very, very high quality, in fact, and fits the binocular absolutely perfectly. I, mean, I don't want to tip it out too much, but you can see it's very secure in there. So that's great. Um, right, the binoculars themselves, they are chunky, they are heavy. Um, but it's, uh, so no doubt that then, um, you wouldn't call this a light pair of binoculars, but having said that, it, you just feel that they ooze class and, and quality. Uh, you just want to hold them and start using them. Um, it's interesting. The, um, the rubber itself is, is very tactile. Um, I'm finding it very grippy on my hands. I don't remember it being as tactile on the 10 by 42 millimeter version I tested. Now, they may have updated the, the materials, and so this is something I will go into when I compare the two uh, later on. So first impressions, yeah, very comfortable. They don't feel, you know, if you look at that binocular, they don't feel to be any sort of bigger or, um, you know, than, a, than much bigger than the a 42 millimeter binocular. Sure, they're a bit longer, you can see that, but it's the size difference, as I always say, with a 50 millimeter is not 
um, it's not massively um, different to a 42 millimeter, yet you get um, so much more um, light gathering uh, capability and the larger exit pupil at the back there. Um, see, this is a five millimeter one here. So you're converting a 10 times binocular into a reasonably good um, low light performer. Whereas a 10 by 42, you know, is, is possible in, in very low light, but it doesn't compare to an 8x42. So this almost makes a 10 times binocular equal to an 8x42. Um, obviously with the downside being it's going to be slightly larger and, he and a heavier device. Right, so uh, what are we going to talk about? The, the actual hinge mechanism, very smooth. Uh, wow. Um, it's, it's a little... Uh, looser than than many binoculars but having said that i don't think it's too loose look it's not going to flip open or, or, or move up to position you want but uh, yeah so it's it's super smooth let's have a quick look at the the focus wheel um again as you would expect is extremely smooth now one thing that with the passion hd series um the actual mechanism of the the focus wheel is is really good it's nice and smooth um, and the track, as you can see, is nice and wide. So if in winter you're using thick gloves, you'll definitely be able to find that and be able to adjust it very accurately, you know, even when wearing really thick winter gloves. Um, the only, you know, sort of negative I would say about it is that, you know, unlike some, you know, sort of alpha level binoculars, they will have a, um, a metal uh, focus wheel, although um, Swarovski don't, they have plastic. Um, so, um, you know, that's very simple. I mean, it's, it's a very, I guess it's part of their design, very simple design, but for me, it doesn't stand out as much as some of the, you know, the ones that I really do like. Now, um, as with many alpha or top end binoculars, the diopter adjuster, so um, being able to adjust one side um, of the barrel um, independently of, the, le of the, the other side, just so you can compensate for any differences in your vision, is incorporated into the actual focus wheel itself. Just something that I really do like, um, um, just because it keeps it um, out the way and then you can lock it. So whatever your setting is, um, and I have links on my website of how to um, properly um, cal calibrate, excuse me, the binoculars to your particular vision. But you know, once you've calibrated it to your particular eyesight, you can then lock it and it will stay like that you know, um, and not get moved accidentally, which can quite often, or can happen, where the typical diopter setting is usually by the right eyepiece over here. So that has a more of a chance of, unless it's lockable, of being moved by accident. Just something that you don't really want. Okay, so focus wheel, excellent. As you'd expect, nice and smooth. The diopter adjuster incorporated clicks and locks the re reassuring chunky sound, which I really do like, that's nice. Um, as I said, look out for the full review of these, um, where I'll go into much, much more detail than just quick this quick and sort of unboxing and first impressions video. Um, the eye pieces, twist type eye cups, really, again, very smooth. Um, you can feel their quality. Um, metal bodied, as you can see, um, many binoculars will use plastic these days, and you just you often get the eye cups feel a bit loose. I mean, there is movement there, but that's nothing more than uh, what is um, at normal and at, at the high end of the, the spectrum. I mean, that's that's almost nothing, um, and as good as anything I've ever seen. I do like the way they click very positively into the single uh, mid midpoint click stop, and then back down where you would probably have them if you wore glasses, you would have them set to this setting. Um, other people may, depending on your particular shape of your face or what glasses you're using, you may go to the half one, or most people will probably use it on the fully extended setting, because that's the setting where your eyes are at the correct distance to the actual um, ocular lenses contained within. Okay, so, as we can see, I'm just looking underneath here. Yeah, I mean, I think that I actually, I can't actually, I don't want to rip the, the rubber away, but the, um, the, the eye cups themselves, I think are, are made from metal as well, which is why you get this really nice um, mechanism as it clicks up and down and it clicks really reassuring. I mean, if you put your eyes against that and push, I mean, anything, if I push extremely hard, that's not going to move which is good because on cheaper binoculars or less well-made binoculars, you'll often find you push your face against the eye cup and it, and it twists in, which um, obviously is messes with the, your, your setting and 
is suboptimal. Right, okay, so I'm gonna leave that video there for now. Um, just because I, you've probably heard or got sick of me rambling and humming and hawing. Um, something that I do quite a lot if I'm going off the cuff and don't have any sort of idea or script or in mind of what I'm gonna say. Um, but before you go, just uh, I'd, I'd like to say, um, please do look out for the full review, um, which will come out in the next couple of weeks or so. Um, what will happen next is I'm going to take these binoculars out and, and thoroughly use them, field test them, you know, use them out in the field a lot. Um, but as well as that, um, for this particular um, model, as I said, I have the 10 by 42 millimeter version, so I'm going to be comparing them like for like against each other. Now, I think that's going to make for a really interesting comparison, especially if you're undecided as to which way to go or which would be right for your specific needs. So what I'll do is I'm going to talk about the, the theory, the differences um, that you can expect between a 10 by 42 and a 10 by 50. Um, and then what was going to be great is then we're going to be able to test that theory um, in real world conditions, well, with my eyes um, and just what I observe. So we're going to take them out in really... Uh, optimal light conditions and see if we can spot a difference, for example, and then but also take them out in really low light conditions, you know, as the sun's setting or perhaps even as it's just set after it's set and compare what we what I can see. And I will obviously try and um, pass that on to you. Um, I might actually even try filming through the binoculars. I, I get a lot of questions about people wanting me to do that. Um, I am always reluctant because the quality that um, I get when filming through a binocular never actually matches what I'm seeing with my eyes. So I just feel it's it, it's uh, it gives a poor show to the binocular. Um, that's for a video another day. There I'm digressing again. But as I said, I have, do keep a lookout for all those. They're coming up soon. I want to say thanks very much for watching, but if you have any sort of comments, thoughts, or opinions, feel free to use that section down below. I'll get my, I'll do my best to get back to you. And then other than that, just say, um, look, if you found this video interesting um, or whatever, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up because um, for a small channel like this, it really does help the algorithm and help me push me up the, the rankings. And then hopefully um, it also then obviously encourages me to do more and more videos and hopefully I'll improve over time. Uh, and then also, lastly, just to say, if you want to subscribe, even better, because then you'll be notified um, when or uh, when I make these new videos uh, and they'll come into your inbox or the next time you log on to YouTube, you'll get a notification. I'm just digressing again. Stop. Ah, thanks very much for watching. I'll uh, see you again next time. Cheers for now.